On October 5th of 2020, I said goodbye to my home. After the passing of a year, I've discovered another. Here in this new land, the passage of time feels foreign. The winter months tore past me, married with a bite of cold and the call of sirens. These months tested me in ways I'd never seen and helped me to grow. I became someone I'm proud of and it put me on the path to become who I believe I was always meant to be. When I first left home all that time ago, I had made a promise to myself to honor life and live alongside this new land in full, no matter how much it challenged me. You see, we bond our souls to the land on which we live, and when given the chance and an open mind, a novel land will give you the greatest gift, the gift of many new perspectives. But before I knew it, the brief gloomy days began to stretch into a long, lingering summer, showcasing this land in more majesty than I believe I could have ever imagined. The earth came alive, and with it, so did I. I was entranced by its song, and my path melded so wonderfully alongside it. It's been a year, living in this land carved by the whims of sirens and sculpted by the hands of gods. It's here where I learned that it's the small things that give rhythm and create momentum for the great. And after many quiet days intertwined with the wilds and a brief wandering back east to my homeland, I realized that this land has become my home. At least for the time being. Today marks one year since I left Virginia for here. And that's crazy. <laughs> it kind of feels like no time has passed. I've talked about it a bit before, but as I've been sitting down and editing together a lot of the footage over the last year, it's clear how much has changed. I'm really glad to be back here where it all started. It feels good to begin again on that note. Plus, I feel more prepared than I was last time, which is a pretty good start, I think. Last winter, I had to learn a lot and it took more time than I expected, but I'm looking forward to being able to work on sharing more of this place and the beauty of this land now that I can. Right now the tide is up a bit. Usually I like to stand on the beach, but there is no beach at the moment, much to Hazel's dismay. But that's okay, she'll be able to cope. She's still learning how to swim appropriately. She knows how to swim, but she's not the best at it, or she's just a little bit of a chicken about it. So slowly we're working on it. Luckily the Water doesn't get so deep out here, so it's not so much of an issue, but I still think it's important for her to know how to. But it just feels good to be back here. I still have a lot of work to do this week and it will certainly be a busy autumn, but that's kind of the joy of this season, preparing for winter. I'm gonna miss it here when it's time to move on, but I'm gonna make the best of it while I can. It's getting colder now. The morning dew will soon turn to frost, and I will no longer be able to walk with my feet bare against the earth. I often find my feelings to be bittersweet this time of year. The days feel fleeting in a way. My practice relies so heavily on the seasons, and I know that soon it will be forced into a period of rest and repose. But there's still time, and there's still beauty and death.
That's what this turn of the wheel teaches us. It's necessary to rest in order for life to begin anew. And even though the land here still remains rather awake, I'm learning how to root myself into it. But now, until the final harvest, I'll be keeping busy, preparing for the winter months ahead, and refining my rhythm here in my home along the Salish Sea. This table 
It is so beautiful. I've been wanting to get a table to work in this bay window for a little while now. And last night while I was editing some footage, I just had this sudden urge to drive to one of the antique stores that's close by. It was really close to closing time and it was just kind of out of the blue. I had no business going and doing that then, but I walked in and just kind of ran through the store really quick and I'm usually pretty bad in those places. I like to buy little knick-knacky things and I just, I didn't even look at those. I went straight into a back room, saw this table, ran up to the person uh, in charge and said, I want that table. It is so beautiful and such a good find. It's a little tall for me because I'm kind of short, but it'll work. It's about counter height. Typically for these tables, I like to have them an inch or two lower just because it works better for me, but I know how to work at a counter and it was just too beautiful to pass up. Plus now I get to sit here and work looking out at this beautiful view. There are a couple things I need to fix up with it before it is perfect. It has a little back rail that um, I need to paint the back part of it white because it's just kind of messy and as you can see through the window, I think the neighbors would appreciate it more if it looked nicer. So I'm gonna do that this evening. My girlfriend is very kindly out buying paint. For now, I think I'm going to use it to uh, make an apple pie or at least start one. My apple pies take two days. <sighs> I'm so in love with this table. I'll show you more details later, but my goodness, is it just stunning. Typically when I'm making my apple pie, I use about 10 good sized apples which is basically whatever comes in a bag here in America. And honestly, even though I know it takes a while to finish the apple pie, it's a lot of simple steps that have a big payoff in the end. So I'd recommend to any of you to try it out. I'll be hopefully sharing this recipe on my other channel at the end of this week, I think, maybe? Although I intended on kind of <laughs> vlogging this first part, so, uh, I'll be vlogging tomorrow and just putting this in the beginning. I forgot this was on my list of videos to make, but that's okay. It's so delicious and so worth it. And honestly, I find recipes like this, the ones that are filled with lots of steps and time are the ones that I love the most. It just allows a lot more space for you to put care into the recipe. And I think that's really important. Alrighty, so now that the apples are peeled, all that's left to do is core them, chop them into big pieces, littler pieces, and then add them to the bowl. Also, my clover has decided that it's time to go to bed. I guess I only have a little bit of daylight left. chopped. Now just add the sugar, lemon, and other spices. I just want to admire this bowl for a second. I found it while I was in Virginia. It's just so beautiful. Now that all the ingredients are in, it's time for the fun part, mixing it all together. You can certainly do this with a spoon, but in all honesty, it's much easier done by hand. And make sure to separate all of the apple slices so that they all get coated with the perfect level of spice and sugar.
Alrighty, good evening you guys. I thought I would just show you a little bit of the wood and our beautiful stacks that we got finished up the other day. It has been two days <laughs> since I stacked all the wood and I am still sore, so uh, it was a big, a big job, but well worth it. Personally, my two favorites are the ones out here by the sides of the house just because I think they look the cutest, <laughs> but the most of the wood is stacked in the cabana. Okay, so it's actually really windy here, so I hope you can hear me all right. I kind of tried to organize it here by having heavier wood and larger logs in one area that would burn through the night and some that would kind of be good middle of the day and then others that's just starter. It's been really strange having to adjust to the way wood burns here. I'm used to having a lot harder wood for fires like ash or oak but here the hardest wood i can get is alder and really it's not all that much better than pine so it just burns through so much quicker and thus having two cords for a tiny house which normally i wouldn't think i'd need that much to get through the winter here but it's just moves twice as fast so that's been a big part of my learnings going into this winter as opposed to last because last winter i ended up having to conserve a lot of my wood and i spent a lot of days really cold and just bundled up in all of my winter clothes instead of burning fires because I was saving it for days that really needed it. And hopefully this year that won't be the case. We've already been having a lot of fires almost all day every day and it's still early October so we'll see. My fingers are crossed but I found a good wood supplier this time and I am hopeful that if I need more I can get some late in the season but that isn't always a sure bet. Still learning but Luckily the winters are not too terribly cold here. It's just more a matter of comfort rather than survival. Most nights at least. I was going to try to film this outside but it is too windy and cold out there so I'm gonna close it out here. I thought it would be fitting to go sit down by the water but it is, it's not gonna happen tonight but that's okay. Also I think I'm a little too far away from the camera. I just finished the edit of all the video up to this point and just kind of felt like sitting down and talking about it a little bit. It's been a really incredible year and a lot of times I forget how much has changed or how much I've grown and getting to look at just how I've grown through video and through what I've chosen to film and share here is incredible. It reminds me of how I was feeling during each time that I was filming and it reminds me of all these stages that I jumped through. When I first got here I was very self-conscious and I was holding on to a lot of things that I didn't need to. I mourned a lot of losses and got over a lot of, what's the word that I'm looking for? Grudges maybe? For years I'd been holding on to a lot of things from my past and just experiences in life and when I got here I realized how much it didn't matter and how much it was holding me back. I was alone here, well, except for Hazel, who was sitting right here, breathing at me very nicely, thank you. You can possibly hear her. And as much as she does make for good company, she's not very good at talking through things. She is a good listener though. All right, Hazel, so here's the plan. We're gonna go to Idaho tonight, and then we're gonna go to South Dakota, and we're gonna see the stars, and then I think we're gonna try to stay in Illinois and then we should be there. It gave me the space and room to reflect on my life and decide where I wanted to go further. I came out here knowing I needed something new but I hadn't really taken the steps to open myself up to that. Not until the winter. It took time for sure and you probably noticed for those of you who've been here for a while that I did not post a lot for a while. And it took me getting to a point where I was confident and comfortable in myself again to do that. But it allowed me to grow and become somebody who I am genuinely proud of. I love my life right now. And honestly, I wouldn't have been able to say that a year ago. I was trying to live in the ways that I had wanted to, but I hadn't opened myself fully to that. And now I have, and it's unbelievable and incredible. And I just don't even know what to do with it anymore. And getting to go through all of this footage reminded me of that. And I think it's important to reflect back on your life and see how far you've come from other points because we don't always think about that. A lot can change in a year and often a lot for the better. And it's really great being here now and seeing all of that. Plus I got to watch Hazel grow up, which felt really special. It'll be a year this following week since I got her and she first entered my life, my sweet girl. 
it was a rough beginning for her, but she's holding out strong. I get a lot of questions still how she's doing, and she is healthy as can be. No more surgeries. We did have a little bit of issues come the spring, but she's back and healthier than ever, and it's great to see her thrive. I feel like there's so much more that I want to say about this, but I can't place it or, or describe it all the way. I'm really grateful for all the opportunities that I've had and how much this place has given me. Yeah, I got you here. <laughs> and, you know, I think the short trip back home that I took was really important. It showed me how much I appreciate this place and reminded me a little bit of why I left as well. And it was what I needed to move forward again. While I still don't think this is where I will end up forever for the reasons I've discussed before, I do still really love it here and I'm glad that I get to spend at least one more winter here. What an incredible year it's been.